was the era of the fifth generation of console the best era in console history in mankind? Find out next on Centel NBA Live Bolt. The best generation in consoles is the fifth generation. No doubt about it. And not only had the beautiful 32-bit hardware such as Sony's PlayStation, Sega's Saturn, and we also had the Nintendo 64. A 64-bit system was such as the Atari Jaguar. The fifth generation started in the early 90s and ended up into the new millennium. The staple benchmark in 3D gaming. Even though the marketing a 64-bit system for the Atari's new Jaguar at the time, it actually had two custom 32-bit processors, nicknamed Tom and Jerry, alongside a Motorola 68000. For the Nintendo 64, it was the complete opposite. That was a true 64-bit system that was built from ground up for true immersed 3D games, such as Mario 64, a brand new experience for strictly the new console, and a brand new experience in sports. The NFL Madden franchise got a new phase, dubbed Madden 64. And even though a great port and horror games such as Resident Evil 2, I don't know how they got all that game and that cartridge, but they did it. Earlier self games, as Sony's PlayStation such as Metal Gear Solid was a pixelated, and the fact the storyline, the graphics at the time was mind blowing. Plus at the time, it wasn't like games that had a first of its kind, sort of like Tomb Raider on the original PlayStation. Nowadays, games look pretty much the same. And to be honest, the generation that we're in right now, the games, they jump, but it's not that big of a jump. The 360 to the PS3, the PS4 to the Xbox One, the Xbox Series X onto the PS5. There's not really that big of a difference. If you look at games and the kind and it grew up in the 90s into the mid 90s. The new millennium got to witness greatness. And even though people in the late 80s had games like Atari, the original Nintendo, it was something truly beautiful about the benchmarking gaming. And to top it off, the storylines was coming in, the graphics was getting better, and actually, it improved. We had something to look forward to, and the internet was jumping in the mid 2000s. Before social media, you can go into your local grocery store, you can go into your local game shop or Walmart and get a magazine and we had demo discs. Those days are long gone. It's all on social media nowadays. If a game comes out, all you have to do is go to YouTube, type in the name of the game and look at gameplay for about three to four to six hours. And the funny part is, the game haven't came out. It's four or five months away and you already got to see the game play. That's so weird to me. It was an element of surprise. The element is lost nowadays. Buying Game Pro magazines and going to the mall to Electronics Boutique and KB Toys to look behind the counter to see a brand new sealed game knowing you had a booklet and goodies that came along with it. Whether it was the Nintendo 64 PlayStation or the Sega Saturn. We had something to look forward to. Nowadays, they don't even put the games in plastic. They send one or two copies to GameStop and you're not even guaranteed to get a book. You can't even take the plastic off. And now they want you to pay 60 to 70 bucks for a new game that just has a disc. Now I kind of see why people are going to digital for some reason. But I'm a collector at heart, and I will always buy physical copies as long as they're available to us, to the public. And now guys, I have a question. Would you rather get a PS5 game or Xbox Series X game new? Or would you rather get a sealed Nintendo 64 game in the box? All right, you decide. It's been your boy, Centel, NBA Live Bolton, and I will. Be back at you with another video pretty soon. Later. Doggy dog.
Oh yeah. And Retro stays alive.